Good morning, afternoon, evening. Dr. Richardson here, lecture seven. Glucose breakdown. Now, we will be building from previous lectures on these topics. So let's uh, get a rewind here for a second. Uh, we learned in lecture six, cells break down molecules in exergonic reactions energy is released and that energy is captured caught and carried to the place where ATP is made this is done by electron carrier molecules then that energy is put into the ATP molecules between the second and the third phosphate and then the ATP leaves where the ATP is made goes out into the cell and it will give up that energy for mechanical transport or chemical work. Hopefully that is all a review. This picture should also be a review from lecture six. It's just in pictures what I just said. Exergonic reaction like breaking down glucose, energy is released, that energy is taken to where ATP is made inside of the orange square ATP is made from ADP and a lonely phosphate bond together to become ATP. ATP leaves the mitochondria where we make ATP and then finds where an endergonic reaction is trying to take place, monomers forming a polymer, and the energy is given up by the ATP and then the endergonic reaction can happen. So all of that should be reviewed. Now, before we get into the details of glucose breakdown, uh, we have to tell you that it fits into the bigger picture. Now, you may or may not know all of the energy on our planet comes from the sun, all of it. And what happens first is plants, autotrophs, will take in that sunlight and also water and CO2, carbon dioxide, and plants make glucose. They also give off oxygen. It's a byproduct, a side product. But now we have a plant, right, with that energy inside because it made glucose. And then we eat the plant, heterotrophs eat the plant. We break that material down into glucose. We do glucose breakdown, we make ATP, and that is how we have the energy to do what we need to do. And what's really interesting is that in the glucose breakdown reaction, water and carbon dioxide are the byproducts, and water and CO2 are exactly what the plants take in to make glucose. So it's kind of like a circle. Uh, energy comes from the sun. Plants do photosynthesis. They take in CO2, take in water, and they're going to make oxygen and glucose. Then we eat the plants. Cellular respiration is another term for glucose breakdown. And then we break down the glucose and we make CO2 and water. So I like to call this the circle of life. You might have seen the Lion King when you were a kid, but the circle of life. Plants make the glucose and oxygen. We break it down and give out CO2 and water, and it just goes around and around and around. Here again is the glucose breakdown chemical reaction. Animals, we take in food glucose we breathe in oxygen and the products are carbon dioxide water and there's the money ATP that's the whole reason we do this all right so let's get to it glucose breakdown has two steps and the second step has three stages Here's your money shot. 
We're going to go over each step, each stage in more detail, but this is the overview of the whole lecture. We have glycolysis is the first step. Cell respiration is the second step. And cell respiration itself has three stages. Creation of acetyl-CoA and Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation, which includes the electron transport chain. By the end of this lecture, you'll know what all that means, I promise. Okay? All right, so please make sure you've got that down. Two steps, second step, three stages. Okay, let's go into more detail. Now, I like this picture because it's going to show the glucose breakdown and what's happening. So we start with glucose up here. We're going to go through glycolysis. We're going to do creation of acetyl-CoA. You don't see that there, but we will. Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation with the electron transport chain. But this picture, do you see here? NADH, electron carrier molecules. Remember those from lecture six? We also see here some CO2. We make CO2 when we're doing glucose breakdown. And look at all that, ATP we're making. So one molecule of glucose being broken down can make about 36 ATP molecules. So that's kind of the big picture. Now, I am going to go over some slides. I'm going to go over some hand-drawn pictures. We also have a table. We're going to talk about a lot of steps and processes. And I want you to use whatever tool works best for you. If you prefer the picture, you study from the picture. If you prefer the table, you can study from the table. If you prefer the slides, you could study from the slides, but I do recommend if you can studying the table or the pictures or both, and that way you won't have to go back through a long PowerPoint, okay? Now, some help for understanding here. Don't try to follow everything that's happening at one time. You'll get confused. You should be either following in your head what's happening to the carbons, carbon atoms, or you should be thinking about and following what's happening to the energy. If you try to follow it all, you'll get confused. So my first tip, go through it all following the carbons, go through it all again following the energy, and I will, I'll do the same thing. Another tip, all of the energy that's being picked up by all these electron carriers along the way will all get dumped at oxidative phosphorylation. Nothing's going to happen to the energy until oxidative phosphorylation. Next tip, don't worry about how many ATPs have made made now. How many ATPs are made now? Don't worry about it as it's going because there are small amounts of ATP made along the way. But the big deal is the 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 30 ATPs made at the end. And finally, a good tip, all CO2 that's made is going to get breathed out. It's going to leave the cell into the blood, into the lungs, and we're going to breathe it out. So some tips for understanding. If you get confused, come back to these tips and then go at the material again and if you use those tips, it should help. Okay, let's get started. First step of glucose breakdown is glycolysis. I want you to know where these reactions are taking place in the cells, which is why we have, we have a little asterisk here. Where is this taking place? Glycolysis is actually three 
different chemical reactions. We are not going to make you memorize each lecture, but I need you to understand the overall picture of what's taking place. Glucose is being changed into two pyruvate molecules. The other thing that's happening is some NAD plus is going to pick up some energy and become NADH. Now, let's look at the picture here, and then we'll look at our picture here. So here's our glucose molecule. Remember, C6H12O6 means there are six carbon atoms, and that's what these gray balls represent. Six carbon atoms in the glucose molecule, because that's where all the action is really happening, is with the carbons. Now, what's going to happen is, as I said, ignore the ATPs as we go along. Let's just worry about that at the end. But another thing you see happening here is you have two empty Uber cars, two NAD pluses, and as we're breaking these bonds, energy is released, and the Uber cars are going to get full NADH, holding that energy that comes as a result of breaking bonds. And at the end of glycolysis, we have two pyruvates. So the overall reaction is glucose becomes two pyruvate. And the main thing that's happening here is we are getting some energy picked up as NADH. Now, this is one of my famous pictures. And all, everything in the lecture is on this picture, but let's take it slow, okay? Let's start right here. Glycolysis. It's the first step. What's happening is glucose is being changed into pyruvate, two of them, but don't worry about that. And you see, an Coming out of this reaction, we have some NADH picking up some energy, and it's going to carry it over here. You notice glycolysis is happening in the cytoplasm. Here's our plasma membrane, the outside of the whole cell. And inside of the plasma membrane, here's cytoplasm. So glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. Main thing that's happening, glucose becomes pyruvate and some energy is picked up as NADH. <clears throat> now, I would consider this the simpler of the two pictures that I have. And now I'm going to show you the more complicated one. That's this one. Now, same thing. Here's glycolysis. Gly glucose is becoming pyruvate. And we have, there's an error. There's no FADH2, just NADH. Carrying that energy over here. Next thing you see happening in both pictures is the pyruvate is going to move into here. And this structure is the mitochondria. And that is where we make ATP. All right. Now, we're transitioning now to our second step, cell respiration. And as I just showed you in the picture, the pyruvate is now going to move into the mitochondria. What's that? Let's take a break for a minute and talk about mitochondria. We did talk about this briefly in lecture four, the cell lecture. The mitochondria is an organelle. It actually has two membranes and it's an organelle where the ATP is made. 
a mitochondria has a structure like this. It has an outer membrane. It has an intermembrane space, which is the space between the outer and the inner membranes. Then it has the inner membrane, and then it has the matrix, which is the space inside the inner membrane. Here's a picture. Outer membrane, yellowy. Intermembrane space, the space between the outer membrane and the inner membrane here. Inner membrane here, and then inside of the inner membrane is the matrix. So, we'll orient you again in our picture here. Outer membrane here. I am space, intermembrane space. I call it I am space. Here's the inner membrane, and then the matrix is all of this area inside. The reason we need to know these structures is because on the test and in the quizzes, we're going to be asking you where things happen. Outer membrane, inner membrane, I am space, matrix, and you need to know the parts of the mitochondria. All right, let's get back to it. So our second step in glucose breakdown is cell respiration. It is made up of three stages. Creation of acetyl-CoA happens first, then Krebs cycle happens second, and then oxidative phosphorylation with the electron transport chain. This is the order in which they happen. All right, so here we go. Creation of acetyl-CoA takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. This is actually only one chemical reaction where pyruvate will become acetyl-CoA. There's the equation, pyruvate becomes acetyl-CoA, and some CO2 is made. Remember, as I said, all CO2, we're going to breathe it out. So if you want to know kind of what's around at the end of this, we have acetyl-CoA, which we have there. We have some CO2. Look, breathing out, breathing out the CO2, and we also have made some NADH, picked up some energy, and we're going to carry it over here where the Uber cars are going to dump off all the energy they picked up. Okay? All right, good. Another pick. Whoops. This is saying from glycolysis. Glycolysis has already happened. We have pyruvate, you see? Glycolysis happens in cytoplasm. Pyruvic acid is another name for pyruvate. It's going to move into the matrix of the mitochondria past the outer membrane, orange, past the IM space, lighter orange, past the inner membrane, kind of yellowy, and into the matrix. Pyruvate is going to turn into acetyl-CoA, and we did breathe out some CO2, and empty Uber car NAD+, picked up some energy, and it's now NADH. All right. Referring for a moment to our more complicated pick, pyruvate becomes acetyl-CoA, there's some CO2, exhale, we breathe it out, and we made some NADH, which is going to come over and dump all its energy off over here. Are you with me? Yes, good. Next, Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle, but I'll call it Krebs cycle. Where does that take place, Richardson? Well, it takes place again in the mitochondrial matrix, right here, Krebs cycle. This is actually seven different chemical reactions. If you were a biology major, you'd have to know each one. We're not going to go that far. I just want you to realize that 
acetyl-CoA will become CO2, all CO2. And what do we do with that? Exhale, we breathe it out. At the end of the Krebs cycle, we have CO2, and we have some FADH2 and NADH. Let's take a look at our picture. Krebs cycle, acetyl-CoA, all CO2. That will be breathed out as before. And since we're breaking bonds, we're going to pick up some energy. NADH and FADH2 carrying energy over here. We're going to find out what happens to the energy next. Go to our more complicated pick for a minute. Same thing. Krebs cycle acetyl-CoA becomes all CO2. We're going to exhale, breathe it out. And Uber cars picked up some energy, NADH, FADH2. Going to drop it off right over here. Finally, one more pick. Pyruvate. We already had our glycolysis happening in the cytoplasm, cytosol, enters past outer membrane, IM space, inner membrane, to the matrix. Here is where we made our acetyl-CoA, and here's Krebs cycle, seven different chemical reactions, and at the end, it's all CO2. We're going to breathe it out, and Uber cars here picked up some passengers. Don't worry about the ATP. I'm not worried about that. I want to make sure you understand the big picture here. All right. Now, at this point, all of the carbons are gone. All of the six carbons from that original glucose molecule are now gone. They've all become CO2 and we've breathed it all out. So now when we're going to go to oxidative phosphorylation, this last stage here, you need to understand all of the carbons are gone. So from here on out, we're only settling or answering three questions. What happened to the electrons, that energy that was picked up by the Uber cars? What happens to the H atoms? Because remember, glucose is C6H12O6. And finally, how exactly do we get ATP out of all this? So now we're going to handle these last three questions. So, what happened to the electrons, this energy? As we said, at each of these stages, NAD plus, FAD picked up energy, Uber cars dropping them off right here. Now, remember, the energy is being carried as hydrogen atoms with their swirling electrons around them. But this is what's interesting. When FAD, NADH drop off the energy, it splits into electrons and H plus atoms. Hydrogen is atomic number one, meaning one proton, one neutron, one electron. And the one plus from the proton, the one minus from the electron is what makes it even, right? One plus, one minus. When we take away the electron and take away that negative charge, what's left is an H plus, just the proton and the neutron. So they kind of separate. Now, What's going to happen next is each thing will do something different. 
the electrons that are dumped off from the Uber car will move into the electron transport chain. And these are the electron transport chain is a group of proteins embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And what these electrons do is you have to think of it like party hopping. They're going to go from one protein, hop to another protein, hop to another protein, and party hopping makes you tired. So what's going to happen is at the end of the electron transport chain, you have some really tired out electrons. Man, we party hopped all night. We're really tired. So the electrons jump from protein to protein in this inner membrane through the electron transport chain and they are losing energy as they jump. The electron transport chain, as I said, is made up of proteins. These happen to be transport proteins. So at the same time that the electrons are jumping from protein to protein, the H atoms are moving through those very same proteins. Okay? Now, at the end of the electron transport chain, we have these tired out electrons. And what they're going to do is they're going to combine with oxygen and the hydrogen atoms and make a molecule of water. So electrons plus oxygen plus hydrogen atoms make a molecule of water. So to answer the question, what happens to the electrons? They get dumped into the electron transport chain. They do some party hopping, jumping from protein to protein. And at the end, they're all tired out, and they meet up with oxygen and hydrogen, and they make some water. So what happens to the electrons? They end up in a molecule of water. Here's a bit more of a complicated picture, but I do like the picture itself, so let's talk about it for a minute. Here are our full Uber cars dropping off electrons electrons moving through. Here's our ETC. Here's our party hopping. Pa party here. Let's go to a party here. Let's go to a party here. And you see, they're going to get all tired out. And then at the end, oxygen joins with protons and electrons to make a molecule of water. So that's what happens to electrons. They go through the electron transport chain, they get tired out doing their party hopping, and they will combine to form water with H's and oxygen. Second question that's still left, what happens to the H atoms? Well, the H atoms get dropped off here, and as I just said, they will move from the matrix, matrix of the mitochondria into the IM space, intermembrane space. Coincidentally, those party hopping electrons, the energy they're losing from partying is helping the H atoms to do energy requiring transport to go from an area of low concentration to high concentration. So let's go over that again because I know it's complicated. Energy carriers picking up energy along the way, dump everybody off, electrons go party hopping, H atoms are going to be pumped against the concentration gradient from an area of low concentration to high concentration 
in the I am space. What happens next? You see there, H atoms move from an area of low concentration to high concentration using energy from the party hopping electrons. And they're going to move into the I am space. What happens next? Well, we're going to get high concentration. We got a lot of H atoms in here. They're building up, building up, lots of H's, lots of H's. And then what's going to happen is the atoms will move now down the concentration gradient from an area of high concentration to low back into the matrix. And as the H atoms are moving, they assist, help in making ATP right there. Okay, so let's go over it one more time. H atoms are dumped off. They're going to move against the gradient from an area of low concentration to high in the IM space. They're going to build up in the IM space. Then they're going to flow down the gradient from an area of high concentration to low back into the matrix and they will make a molecule of water. All right. Here's a nice pick. So here we are. We're in the matrix here. The H's have been dropped off. You see them moving from the matrix into the IM space. They're going to build up here, then they're going to flow down the gradient from an area of high to low. And as they're moving back into the matrix, looky, looky, ADP plus a lonely phosphate will become ATP with that energy caught between the second and the third phosphate. So H atoms, they take quite a trip, right? Okay, and finally, the third question, I already said it, but we'll say it again. How exactly is ATP made? Well, as we said here, as H atoms are pumped back into the matrix, they move through a transport protein that's called ATP synthase. Synthesis means making. So, that protein does double duty. It transports hydrogens in, but the protein also makes ATP. And that happens because ADP and lonely phosphates are hanging out in the matrix just waiting for H atoms to come through and assist in making ATP. And there's the ATP that will then leave the mitochondria and go out somewhere here in the cell and give its energy back for an endergonic reaction. Wow, complicated, right? Here's a picture. Here's the IM space building up H atoms. They're going to move through this ATP synthase protein. And here's our ADP and P going to make ATP. Wow. Good stuff. I like this little video because it goes over just what we've talked about. And I, again, I think animations help when you can see the stuff moving. I think it, it definitely helps. So please take a moment and watch that video. Final score. I'm never going to ask you on a test about numbers but just to show you what one molecule of glucose can do, can give us between 34 and 36 ATP molecules, six water molecules, and six CO2 molecules. ATPs are here. Water is made when oxygen that we breathe in plus the H atoms plus the electrons all combine to make water, and the CO2 made here. And here, of course, we breathe out through our lungs. ATP, water, and CO2 
are the products. Here's another nice video for you just to hear somebody saying it with some different words. If there's a part you think is complicated, watch the video. It might make that part a little easier. Finally, you might be wondering, well, okay, we eat carbs and we, we break down glucose, but what about proteins and fats? Well, believe it or not, proteins and fats can participate in these reactions as well, but they enter the process at a different point. Just take a look here. So when we eat carbohydrates, sugars, we break them down to glucose, and here you see glucose breakdown here. But look, lipids. Lipids can break themselves down to glycerol and fatty acids, and glycerol can enter right during glycolysis. So it can become pyruvate and join the party. Proteins, we break those down into monomers of amino acids, but guess what? They're pretty versatile. They could enter the party, turn themselves into pyruvate and party on, they could turn themselves into acetyl-CoA and party on, and they could also enter at the Krebs cycle. So if this is why someone who's maybe eating a low-carb diet, you're not going to just waste away and have no energy because the proteins you're eating and the fats that you're eating can also join this breakdown. They just don't join as glucose. They join as other chemical molecules. All right, one final review, the Amoeba Sisters, they do a nice little uh, cell respiration video as well, and this video will be attached to your lecture. And before we finish, I want to show you one more thing, and that's the table that I've made. And for some people, a table might be easier to study from than those pictures that I've drawn. So on my table here, Across the top, we have the steps and stages. We have glycolysis, creation of acetyl-CoA, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, and oxidative phosphorylation, which we call OxFos for short. As I said in the, earlier in the video, I am a stickler for where is this stuff happening? So glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. Creation of acetyl-CoA and the Krebs cycle happen in the matrix of the mitochondria. The electron transport chain, that's embedded, those proteins embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria and oxidative phosphorylation happens both in the matrix and in the IM space of the mitochondria. As I've said, when you're going through it in your mind, you should either follow the carbons or follow the energy. Don't try to follow both. Let's follow the carbons. Glucose is a six carbon molecule and in glycolysis, we go from glucose to 2-pyruvate. A pyruvate, each one is a 3-carbon molecule. We haven't lost any carbons yet. In creation of acetyl-CoA, we have pyruvate going to acetyl-CoA. They do. There is some CO2 breathed out here in creation of acetyl-CoA. And then we go to Krebs cycle, and that's when acetyl-CoA becomes all CO2, and all that CO2 is breathed out. So at this point, right here, carbons are gone. Nothing happening with carbon over here. They're all gone. And how do they leave the body? All the carbons leave as CO2. Making ATP. There are small amounts of ATP made here. I'm not worried about that. But the, the big money comes over here in oxfos where we make 34 to 36 ATPs. And then finally, let's follow the energy. 
in glycolysis and creation of acetyl-CoA, we have NAD becoming NADH. So again, what's happening? Bombs are broken, energy's picked up in Krebs, NADH, and FAD. Again, all these energy carriers picking up these H atoms and the electrons, they're all dropped off right here, dropped off. And then what happens? Electrons are going to enter the electron transport chain, party hopping, moving from protein to protein. Finally, they're all tired out. They get back to the matrix, and they're going to merge with H atoms and oxygen to become water. The H atoms will move from matrix to the IM space against the gradient from low to high concentration. How do they, where do they get energy to do that? From those party hopping electrons. The H atoms then are going to build up in the IM space. Lots of H atoms, lots of them, lots of them. Then they're going to go down the gradient, area of high concentration to low. IM space back into the matrix. And this movement of the H atoms assists, helps out in the creation of ATP, and finally, the H atoms will combine with electrons and oxygen that we breathe in to become water. All right, please, 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 you got to go over it a lot of times to make sure you understand. And if you have any questions, let us know. But that's it, Lecture 7, Glucose Breakdown. See you next time.